Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Dinosaur Facts. Today we're going to break down the top 10 craziest dinosaur theories ever proposed. Little note, lots of the ideas for this video came from the paleontology iceberg from Reddit. Ew. Uh, I will put a link to it in the description. Fair warning though, shit is gargantuan. Dinosaurs are interesting largely because of the mystery surrounding them. These animals lived on the same planet as we do relatively recently, yet we know so little about them. But in such a volatile field as paleontology, there's bound to be some silly ass theories, and today we are going to take a look at some of the goofiest, most incorrect, and even a few interesting ones. Number 10. Plastic Dinosaurs Are Dinosaurs a silly little conclusion that many people have drawn over the years is that since oil comes from fossilized materials and plastic comes from oil, then plastic dinosaurs must be made of real dinosaurs in a kind of weird act against God type of way. But as paleontologists love to do, if you have a cool idea, they quickly shat on this one too. While it is true that oil comes from fossils, most of this is plant, algae, and marine life, as well as from much older fossil beds than dinosaurs. So while there's a small chance there might be part dinosaur in your little dude, it's mostly false. Number 9. T-Rex was a scavenger. We always think of the T-Rex as a big, giant, scary, evil, bastard monster, but when I was but a wee lad, I remember hearing about a silly little theory that really fucked with my silly little mush brain. This one paleontologist pitched to this little postulation that maybe, just maybe, the gigantic hulking Tyrannosaurus was actually a huge pussy. He said that the gigantic, scary, intimidating, shit-inducing Tyrannosaurus was in actuality a fat piece of shit that used its size to scare off smaller carnivores from a kill so it could steal the food, like a homeless guy in a Wendy's. This theory has largely been disregarded and is generally accepted that like many carnivores, it would have hunted as well as scavenged if it got the chance. Even though this theory was quickly dismissed, even now you will still encounter the odd fool who still believes this theory to be accurate. And there is only one way to address these people. Number 8. Sauropods had multiple hearts. Sauropods are known for their crazy long necks. Some, like Mamenchisaurus, had necks longer than the rest of their entire body for some fucking reason, I don't know. But back in the day, scientists had trouble understanding how sauropods would have been able to hold their necks up and get enough blood to their brains. This spawned an interesting idea, that sauropods had an additional heart in the base of their necks. One in particular, Barasaurus, has been suggested to have eight fucking hearts, but has six being placed along its neck. This theory has not been outright disproven, but many scientists currently steer clear of it. But since soft tissue rarely fossilizes, this is a hard one to outright prove or disprove. A similar theory to this one involves the Stegosaurus. In the 1870s when, our boy, Othniel Charles Marsh, discovered the Stegosaurus. He found a large space near the hip, where he believed there to be a second thinker. He thought that the accessory brain would have helped with movement of the back legs since they were a bit longer than the front ones, and the spiked tail. This space was likely used for a swollen spine, a feature in all us amazing land-loving members of Vertebrata. The Stegosaurus' swell was likely larger to help control its defensive tail. Number 7. Mesozoic Misnomers This theory isn't as crazy as a lot of the rest, but is a common occurrence. Classification of species in paleontology is a more tedious process than modern zoology. Since we do not have the living creature in front of us, we have to go off of only the bones, and they are often incomplete or even fragmentary. Also, without the ability to use genetic analysis and the patchwork of knowledge that is the fossil record, classifying dinosaurs can be difficult. So over the years, many dubious species have been described. If a name is used twice, then the earlier named creature keeps it, and the later one has to change. This also works if two names have been assigned to the same species. Triceratops and Taurosaurus are often compared, claiming that the Triceratops is a sub-adult version of the Taurosaurus. Nanotyrannus has famously been called a baby Tyrannosaurus, which I learned from Jurassic Fight Club. And the most infamous example, Pachycephalosaurus, Stygimoloch, and Dracorex. These are three separate genuses, but it is now thought that they represent three distinct growth stages of the same genus. 
And finally, Troodon is famous for being the dinosaur with the largest brain-to-body ratio, but recently paleontologists think they fucked up and that Troodon and Stenonychus are the same. Stenonychus' name outdates that of Troodon, so even though the family has been named after them, the Troodontids, it may end up invalid in the coming years. Number 6. Smithsonian Suppression most of us have probably heard of the Smithsonian. Big ass museums, lots of cool shit, yeah, whatever. But did you know that they are also the brains behind the entire modern paleo cover up? Oh, yeah, now I got your attention. Listen closely. Many religious fanatics, Bigfoot hunters, and other assorted weirdos believe in Smithsonian suppression, a conspiracy that the Smithsonian is hiding the truth about things like the real Garden of Eden and Bigfoot feet. Believers of this horseshit uh, think that the museum is hiding fossil evidence of giant human skeletons, advanced ancient civilizations, cryptids, and more because they challenge our current paleontological beliefs. And this goes all the way to the top. This was just a classic conspiracy theory and seems to be still largely underground. But soon, brothers, we will have our day. Number 5. Dragons are genetic memory of dinosaurs. We all know dragons. Big, scary, scaly, fire-breathing monsters. They have appeared in folklore from tons of ancient civilizations. But that's the interesting part. Dragon folklore appears largely the same in many different cultures, including cultures who had not interacted before the creation of these mythological beasts. So what if they aren't purely mythological? A little author dude by the name of Carl Sagan proposed that dragons are actually a sort of genetic memory of dinosaurs from our mammalian ancestors who were murdered and eaten by them over 66 million years ago. During the time of dinosaurs, the largest mammals only evolved to be the size of a possum and were likely prey items for predatory dinosaurs. And since mammals emerged around the same time as dinosaurs, this was the case for most of mammalian life on Earth. This theory states that 165 million years of dinosaur rule beat an image of malicious reptile overlords into our simple little rat brains. To be honest, I really fuck with this theory. Number 4. The Aquatic Ape Hypothesis As humans, we're kind of fucked up little creatures. We are largely hairless, unlike about 90% of mammals, and we walk on two legs, which is kind of a goofy choice for animals in general. Well. The aquatic ape hypothesis attempts to explain our anomal our anonym anonymous oh my god anomalous anatomy. Supporters of this theory believe that our ancestors spent a significant portion of their life in water. They state that the presence of the traits listed above, our partially webbed fingers, the fact that babies can instinctively swim at birth, and many more as evidence. Personally, as a big fan of a little splash around, I would have to agree with this theory. The big problem, however, is that there is absolutely none, zero, zilch, nada in terms of fossil evidence for this theory. So for now, the aquatic ape hypothesis is going to have to go on the back burner. Number 3. T-Rex had primate level intelligence. While it isn't the best known fact, the T-Rex would have actually been a smart animal. Its brain case was quite large, and there was a Solurosaurian, a clade of dinosaurs that contained tyrannosaurs, dromaeosaurs, and modern birds, all dinosaurs known to be intelligent. Its sense of smell, hearing, and sight would have also been phenomenal. But brain size does not mean everything. Huh? For example, the T-Rex's brain was far larger than a Troodon's, but Troodon is identified as the smartest dinosaur due to its brain-to-body ratio rather than raw size. However, at the start of this year, a new study was released that claimed that the Tyrannosaurus would have had roughly 3 million neurons in its brain, which is similar to a modern day baboon. The implications of this are kinda crazy. This means that a T-Rex was likely as intelligent and social as modern day monkeys, apes, dolphins, and whales. This also revealed that it likely lived around 40 years, and that it is possible that the creature even had a primitive culture, which sounds pretty baller if you ask me. Number 2. Spinosaurus was bombed on purpose. Spinosaurus was first discovered in 1912 in Egypt, and brought back to a museum in Munich, Germany. Now, if you're a history buff, you'll know a few things that are kinda funny are still yet to happen in the wonderful country of Germany. 
It managed to get through World War I just fine, but in 1944, a British bombing raid on Munich led to the complete obliteration of the first and only known fossil of Spinosaurus ever discovered. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's gonna happen, but... More Spinosaurus fossils, as well as enough to carve out its own family, the Spinosaurids, were discovered in the 90s and 2000s, but some of this work was difficult without the holotype fossil. A holotype is the fossil that the description and name of a species is based on, and is important for paleontologists to determine if other fossils are from the same animal or not. Drawings and reconstructions still exist, but the real thing is much more useful. Now, come closer. There is a conspiracy theory that the Allies bombed the Spinosaurus on purpose. But why would they do that? Your stupid little sheep brain asks. Because this new discovery was on track to be the largest theropod ever discovered, and today this is still the case. This dethrones the previous title holder, the T-Rex, discovered in 1902 in an allied country. The theory is that the Allies did a little trolling and blew up the Germans' prized dinosaur on purpose. And that is my definition of cruel and unusual warfare. Number one, sauropods had to live in water. This is an older theory as well, but the character development over the years has been crazy. So way back before even the first Call of Duty and you could buy hot dogs at gas stations, paleontologists believed that sauropods were simply too heavy to have been able to live on land. They were thought to have been so massive that without the buoyancy of water to offset their weight, their bones would crush under their own weight. This is now known to be false, unless you talk to a little guy named Brian J. Ford. In the wondrous year 2018, Brian wrote a book called Too Big to Walk, in this mockery of science, he claims that everyone else is wrong and that they can't walk, I know it, despite having no academic background in paleontology whatsoever and by his own admission has surface level knowledge of dinosaurs. And when other, sorry, real scientists thought it was funny and laughed at him, bro doubled down. Bri Bri next pushed the sex lakes theory, the most infamous dinosaur theory of recent memory. The sex lakes theory states that dinosaurs were only capable of breeding while at least partially submerged. This theory was used as an answer to the question of how many dinosaurs bred, as many seem too heavy to not crush another horny dinosaur. And ones like Stegosaurus had actual protection jutting out of their back. This question has plagued paleontologists for a long time, but sex lakes is not the fucking answer in case you didn't clue into how brain dead that is. Just to be clear, no animal would ever evolve, or much less be as successful as dinosaurs were, if they had such a clear evolutionary flaw. But big BJ Ford doesn't believe in all that liberal agenda horseshit, and he even claims that the reason the dinosaurs went extinct was because all the sex lakes dried up. Round of applause for the greatest scientist of our generation, and the greatest paleontological theory of all time. Thanks for watching, and I hope your brain is just a little more full with dinosaur facts and knowledge that the liberal media doesn't want you to know about. Have a good one. Bye.